Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we are starting with a victory, a news of Mikael Criso actually winning his show Arnold Classic Europe. I'd say this was a rather easy win for him. Why? Was it easy? Did he have no competition? Well, first of all, he looked amazing. Yeah, this guy looks like, like an absolute freak. You guys know how much I like this physique. The muscle bellies, the completeness, just the, the, the sheer freak factor. It's just phenomenal. He's just an amazing bodybuilder. But truly, in IFBB Elite Pro, in Arnold Classic Europe, he doesn't really have much of a competition. And here's the guy that was second to Michal. Now, he was... He, he had similar build. He was a little bit smaller. And, of course, nobody has muscle bellies like Michal. But he did have more shredded glutes. So he was, let's say, in a better condition. And even that was not enough. Because Michal is simply a different level of a bodybuilder. I'm sure he wasn't really suffering, I'm sure he didn't really go to that dark place during this prep and I don't think he's really pushing his body to the max in the offseason because he doesn't have to, as long as he wants to stay in IBB Elite Pro and dominate over there against guys like this, he doesn't really have to kill himself for that and I say it's a wasted potential, I say he would be much better bodybuilder if he really had to push his body to its limits in order to place in top pro shows in IB Pro League. That would be amazing if he really had to push himself to the absolute limit. And that's the main reason why we want him in IB Pro League. Not just because we want to see him compared to the other guys. Not just that, but because he needs that push to fulfill his maximum potential. And his maximum potential? It can be a lot. I have no idea what it is. But with these genetics, I say sky's the limit. Alright, the next segment is going to be about Big Remy and the interview that he did for Enhanced Labs, his sponsor. So he was asked a couple of not very interesting questions, pretty simple, basic questions that you ask bodybuilders. But his answers made this Q&A pretty interesting, so let me show you a couple of parts. What's the most weight you've ever bench pressed? 280 kilograms. How much weight? Have you leg pressed? Leg press, uh, I think 1,200. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let, let's hold on for a second. So the question was, what is his max bench press? And you guys know we saw him uh, do some dumbbell presses with a lot of weight, with 200 pound dumbbells. But now he said he, he did bench press with 280 kilos. Uh, the, guys, that's six and a half plates. <laughs> six and a half plates on a bench press is, is that real did he get it wrong somehow did he really do that maybe he used to do more powerlifting when he was uh, younger and now he decided to, to, to switch to bodybuilding because he doesn't want to get injured and he's not really going for for strength i mean being as big as he is i wouldn't be too surprised but still six and a half plates on a bench press 280 kilos, guys, that's 616 pounds. Is Big Ramy actually benching 600 pounds on a bench press? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I should believe this. If you guys have any idea, any sources, any videos of this, send them to me and tell me what you think in the comment section. How many meals do you eat a day? Uh, six meals. How many grams of protein do you eat in a day? Uh, it's depended about, I um, mean... Close to the show or far, but uh, right now, 250 gram. All right, this one is also very interesting and hard to believe. Really, he says he's eating 250 grams of protein per day, which is, you guys know, nothing. Anybody can eat that much. But I'm not. I, I believe that. I believe that because he. Uh, they all say he cannot lose weight. He cannot lose muscle, and it's actually really hard to lose muscle uh, when you're on this point. I mean, he's young. He's on. Here, he's training hard it's hard for him to lose anything any weight and now also he's dieting so i'm sure chad nichols got his calories super low in order to get him shredded he can get big easily and he doesn't need to get bigger so maintaining is definitely much easier than gaining i'm sure he ate a lot more back when he was trying to grow 
but I still think he didn't really have to push his body to its limits in order to grow. I mean, there are guys who have to eat like 12 times a day, you know, force feed themselves constantly, wake up three times in the middle of the night to have a shake in order to grow. I think Big Ramy, he has just genetics for growth and he doesn't really have to push his body that much to get this big. So I believe this one for sure. About the bench press, I'm not sure. I think he might have gotten something wrong, but as far as eating, yeah, I can I can get that even though it is really not really surprising, but it's kind of strange to hear something like that. A guy of his size eating 250 grams of protein. Mm, weird. What motivated you to be a bodybuilder? Uh, from the professional, I love the I love Victor Martinez and I hope I, I, I be like him one day. All right, so he says he wants to be like Victor Martinez one day. Even though Victor never won the Mr. Olympia, he was second and he was way smaller than Big Ramy. They say he was robbed in 2007. He should have won that Mr. Olympia. Anyways, when I heard this, I thought, Big Ramy, come on, don't be, don't be fake modest. You know, you don't really think that. You think you're better than Victor. But then, accidentally, I stumbled upon this video of Victor Martinez posing and uh, Big Ramy might have a point here, actually. God, just look at his physique, look at his Christmas tree, look at his conditioning, this maturity, I mean, uh, this shape, this genetics. Truly an extraordinary physique, and now I get it, now I get what Big Ramy said. So yeah, in order for him to get this kind of conditioning, these kind of details, this kind of look to the muscle, it's gonna take some hard work and a lot of time, and might never happen, because this is, this is God-given genetics. But you know who is actually making progress in that muscle maturity in the back double bicep? James Collinshead. So Big Ramy also has that problem. His back double bicep, especially lower lats, need more mm, dryness, maturity, development. And the same thing is with James Collinshead. But James, right now, at about three weeks out of Mr. Olympia, looks amazing. Really, he is getting in shape. And I think in about, as he says, in a week, that's, that, that's gonna do it. He'll be pretty much ready, I mean, he could lose another like 20 pounds and get even more shredded, but why would he do that? This is open bodybuilding, the size matters a lot, fullness, roundness, those are all key factors. So in a week of dieting, he'll be there, and I watched his uh, YouTube video, training with Andrew Jacked, and it's really amazing to see this guy actually be so, so happy, you know, smiling, enjoying the prep. Me, I'm two weeks out right now, and I'm suffering. You guys might not hear it in my voice because I'm really, I'm really, I'm really passionate about bodybuilding, and when I talk about it, I light up. But to the majority of the day, I I'm really miserable. Honestly, two weeks out. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoy the process. When I see my body change every day, I love it, and I can't wait to present my physique, and I will show it to you guys once it's ready. And in the meantime, while I'm eating, I watch YouTube, I watch bodybuilders who are vlogging their preps. And I watch, for example, Nick Walker and Ian Valier and Chris Bumstead, I don't know, the other guys. And I don't think any of them are as optimistic, as positive, as happy, as full of energy like James. And it really made me feel much better about my prep, because when I saw this guy, I mean, who is prepping for Mr. Olympia, it's a really high level of competition, doing his first Olympia ever. Being so full of positive energy really made me feel better because I should be grateful that I'm able to prep for a bodybuilding show. There is nothing better, there is nothing I enjoy more in life and I'm really so grateful that I'm able to do that. Anyways, James right now looks really good, in a really good shape, bigger, improved, better than last year and this is his weakest pose. This one, however, not so weak. <laughs> Look at him here. Look at the size of those legs and the arms and the, the, the wee taper and everything. He's getting gnarly. He's getting grainy. And I can't wait to see this mass monster stacked against the lineup of the top, top bodybuilders in the world. And I'm really curious to see him first time up there and to see how he fares against the other guys. And if you guys want to see my physique, what it looks like right now at two weeks out, I'm gonna show that to you at the end of this video, so stay tuned. First off, we're gonna see Chris Bumstead with his new physique update. So I thought my physique will look more impressive if you see it after Chris, rather than after James, because James is super massive, but Chris is really big as well right now. I think it's pretty safe to say that his arms are not small anymore, just insertions are not really that great. Look at his abs. Great conditioning for how many? Three weeks out. So yeah, he's bringing the shape. He's bringing uh, the, the mass. He, I think, he improved as well. 
Uh, look at this guy. He is not small. I mean, this is classic physique, but these guys are freaking huge. Yeah, they are not as big as bodybuilders, but they are not that much far away. And when people see somebody else who is not as big as Chris, they think they are natural. Don't ask me if I'm natural, because I'm not. But I'm not as big as Chris, unfortunately. Maybe someday, I don't know, we'll see, but not yet. This guy is freaking massive. He did turn pro in bodybuilding, and I think he will do, he said he will do an open, open show once, Arnold Classic, before he retires. So conditioning spot on, he looks great, and there's a training video as well of him doing some arms, and again, it's safe to say, he does not have small arms anymore. I was talking to my buddy, we were talking about how did Chris grow his arms, and I found out that he was doing a separate arm day, plus he was doing some finishing exercises after chest and back, which is nothing special, and his style of training, just basic stuff. So how did he make his weak body part so much better? Well, it's simple. He does have growth genetics. He can grow muscle easily. What he doesn't have genetic-wise is great insertions for arms. But as far as growing, he grows like wheat. So he is he turned pro in in open open bodybuilding when he was 21 or 22, guys. That's very young for turning pro in bodybuilding. And now, after figuring out that he has that autoimmune system disease, he can't push gear in the off-season. As they say, he's doing only 500 mix of tests in the off-season, which is very low. And he's still able to progress, to grow. Imagine what he would look like if he pushed gear, like heavy, 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 if he did like 5 grams of gear or something like that. Imagine that. And also, he's not even measuring food in the off-season, that's what Ian says. He's basically eyeballing his portions. So imagine if he force-fed himself. He would be an open bodybuilder, a good open bodybuilder, until this point. He would be much, much bigger than his. And uh, that, that's just genetics. I mean, he's a genetic freak. Though now, his arms are big. They're not small. The guys, don't say these arms are small. They're not. Maybe not the prettiest shape, not the best insertions, but these arms are freaking big. And this is Chris, at three weeks out of Mr. Olympia, can't wait to see the final package, I have a feeling it's going to be improved. And for the end, this is me, two weeks out. I'm doing classic bodybuilding division, uh, this is something we have in Europe, we have classic bodybuilding, we also have classic physique, but the weight cap is higher in classic physique, that's the ultimate goal. Right now, I'm still too small for classic physique, I'll be competing at about 200 pounds at 6 foot 1, so I still have ways to go, you know, Chris is like 230 on stage, something like that, so uh, in order to reach my weight cap in classic, I think I can gain like 30 to 35 pounds. I think I'll be a little bit less than 200 pounds when I'm, when I'm de depleted, uh, de dehydrated completely and everything. So if you're interested in more details, you can ask me, I'll tell you in the comment section. I don't want to talk about myself in this video too much. But basically I got to this point without fat burners, which I'm starting tomorrow at two weeks out. But that is two weeks out of first show. Then I have two weeks more to Serbia Nationals and then another two weeks to IABB World Amateur Championships. So that's the goal. Basically, I am six weeks out of uh, out of the most important show and two weeks out of the first show. And I'm intending on winning the first two. But as far as the worlds, uh, the goal is like finals, you know, top five. And if I really kill myself, maybe top three. But I don't know. I don't know how will I stack against those guys. I still have to go to see. I never competed at that level before. But this year I made a lot of improvement. I really worked hard in my off season, and this is the end result. Basically, not really the end result. I still have some fine polishing to do. It will be much better on the stage, and I will, I will, I will show you the video of the of the show once I'm done competing. Anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it. And for more bodybuilding content like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best, and bye bye.